What's up everybody, Pete here from The Sunday Drive and in today's video we're going to be showing you how to replace the AC condenser in your 2004 Silverado, so stay tuned. So before we get into it, I just want to show you where everything is located. The condenser is right here. There might be a plastic piece, depending on your vehicle, covering that up. The dryer and accumulator is right here back on the passenger side of the firewall. And the AC compressor is down below this intake. To remove the intake, we're going to loosen this clamp up here and this clamp over here. Let's use a flathead screwdriver. And then you can pull this off of the throttle body. You can actually squeak it right by this engine cover and the fan shroud, like so. Go ahead and pull this off the intake box. Now we'll remove this electrical connection from the intake box. And go ahead and pull the air box out. I'm going to remove this fan shroud. You can use this tool to pry them out. This is what that looks like. There's four of these. And then there's two on the driver's side. There's also these 10 millimeter nuts on either side, and then this will lift up. But you're gonna have to snake it out from these coolant hoses. Some of these clip out, and you can pull them out of the shroud. Next, we're gonna remove the headlights and the grill. We actually have a video installing these headlights and reviewing these Amazon headlights. These are the Autosaver 88, and they actually, they look pretty cool, and they've been holding up pretty well. So highly recommend these if you're looking for aftermarket replacement headlights. So to remove the headlight, pull this pin out. That's really all that's holding it in, besides the electrical connections on the back. So go ahead and twist these electrical connections. And these lights do have some extra wires that go down to the bottom light so that the running LED lights work. Just kind of move it out of the way. And now you can pull your grill out. It's actually just held in with some clips on the ends and some clips in the middle. And some clips in the bottom. Now, according to the Chilton's manual, you want to remove the radiator to replace the condenser, but we're going to try it a different way. We're going to remove this brace in the front of the condenser, and you can get to the outer bolts by removing these lower uh, headlights. And then there's two more bolts right here, and they're going uh, horizontal towards the back. In order to take this brace out, we're going to have to remove this accessory cooler. So this is two 10 millimeter bolts. So by moving this cooler out of the way, you can get to this inner 10 millimeter nut or bolt. And to get to the outer bolt, we're gonna remove this lower headlight. There's the second one. Now on the passenger side. Now we have to get to these two bolts on top of the bracket, and we're actually going to use this really thin socket wrench tool. It's very useful. We use it on a lot of BMW jobs. It saved the day countless times, so we'll have this linked in the description. I was having a hard time getting to the back of these. I could get them loose, but to get my fingers back there and remove the bolt, was giving difficult. So what I did was came around on the inside and removed the two 13 millimeter bolts for the radiator. So you take these two 13 millimeters out and then you kind of just push the radiator away from these bushings, pivot this side out a little bit and get your arm behind here to remove these two bolts. So now it's loose up here. There's also two more 10 millimeters that you're gonna wanna remove down here. They were holding the, this brace in place. 
they're horizontal. Uh, the two were vertical, and then the one is horizontal right here. And then now you can move this back and forth. The only thing that's really limiting my movement right now is this cable for the hood latch release. But I should be able to lean it forward like that and get the old condenser out. So we should be getting close to removing this condenser. We're gonna take this last 10 millimeter out. The one on the driver's side was already removed because it was holding on this accessory cooler. So we'll pop this out and then we should only have the two AC lines. It feels like the only thing holding me in are the two bottom bushings that the entire condenser sits on down here and these two lines on the passenger side. Before you go removing any of the refrigerant lines, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you evacuate the whole system and you're gonna to wanna to take it to a shop if it has refrigerant in it still. In my case, all the refrigerant leaked out, so there's nothing left. Unfortunately, it went into the atmosphere, but it wasn't my fault, so. But don't do it knowingly. And then once there's no refrigerant in the system, you can start disconnecting the lines. Also, when you do disconnect the lines, it's highly recommended to replace the dryer accumulator. It's only $20 and that will prevent it from getting saturated with moisture, which that's what it needs to do to work properly. And if it gets saturated from disconnecting the lines, then it's no bueno. So now you're going to want to disconnect these lines. So this is the top refrigerant hose. You just use a deep 13 millimeter socket to break it loose. Okay, top lines disconnected. Now we'll remove the bottom one. You can actually get to this from under the wheel well. Same 13 millimeter. And I'm actually just gonna stick this ear plug in there and let that expand so that will block off the plug. So this stud is supposed to come out with a e-torx bit, um, but unfortunately the head is rounding off or starting to break and it's kind of holding me up from getting the condenser out. So I'm gonna take this 10 millimeter bolt out and then I'm going to make a gap here and try and get the condenser out that way. If this doesn't work, then I'll probably just cut the stud because the new condenser does come with new studs and nuts. Okay, so now this should come out. And there you go, that's the condenser removed. So we've brought the condenser over to the table and what we're gonna have to do now is add some refrigerant oil or lubricant. When you remove the compressor, you're supposed to drain out whatever lubricant is in there and then add in the same amount to the new compressor. Same goes for the condenser, but not enough lubricant came out of my old compressor. In fact, you can see it here, it was less than an ounce and that's Definitely not enough. Since we're replacing most of the components in my system, and we know that it needs eight ounces total, we're actually just gonna distribute it two ounces into the compressor, two ounces into the condenser, two ounces into this dryer and accumulator, and then two ounces, which we are assuming are distributed already in the system through the hoses and the evaporator. So we're gonna go ahead and add two ounces of lubricant to this condenser and then install it. We're also going to wait to add these studs until after it's in the vehicle because the studs were kind of holding us up trying to remove it. So make it simpler for ourselves. And don't forget to reinstall your bushings on either side. And also make sure that your rubber bushings for the bottom are installed as well. So now what we're doing is removing these end caps that sealed it. This one was actually slightly pressurized when we took the first one off. And I'm going to add my two ounces of oil. Also, you wanna replace these old seals. So it has these in there. So here's the new seals. I'm actually using a little bit of fresh refrigerant lubrication. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the new condenser. Okay, so the condenser is pretty much where it wants to be. I'm gonna put these in. 
The longer bolts were the ones that go vertical. The third bolt on either end of this brace is actually horizontal instead of vertical. So the two long ones are vertical. And then this one goes under the plastic horizontally. Go ahead and plug the sensor back in. So that's it guys, that is how you replace the condenser on your 2004 Silverado or GM vehicle. Don't forget we also have videos showing how to replace the accumulator dryer and the compressor as well as the orifice tube that is in one of the lines. So if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe and thanks for watching.